All right, guys, welcome to the Digital Barbell Podcast. Thank you for being here. Happy New Year if you missed any of the other episodes this year. We're recording this on January 10th, and I have a question to ask. (laughs) Is it too late to still have your Christmas tree and decorations up? Absolutely not. (laughs) Just yesterday, Blakely did say, though, you know, I think we need to take our Christmas tree down because we use it. I just don't want it to be a fire hazard. It's a real tree, and it's looking pretty dry. It, we, it just just now started looking dry, but it doesn't. Yeah, it hasn't lose, lost any needles. Yeah. Isn't that the sign that it's too like dying that it loses needles? But it hasn't drinking water in like this a was month. A, this was a really weird tree we got this year. It's a good one. It looked really awesome, but it never really drank any water the entire. We got it right after Thanksgiving. That's didn't because we? it knows our water is. <laughs> it toxic. does. I guess it drank a little bit of water because it does have a giant salt ring around the trunk because our water yeah. is so salty here. Um, but we have other things to talk about other than when you should take your Christmas <laughs> decorations down. I'm not taking it down. It's so, I like it. <laughs> before, uh, before we get to the sponsor though, let, tell me if I'm the only one who it feels like this. Do you ever like just go about your daily life and then one day you look in the mirror and you're like, all of a sudden I really need a haircut yesterday. You do that every month. Yesterday but... I didn't need a haircut. Wasn't even thinking about it. Today it's an emergency. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way my Your life goes. Your hair is like that. I think about that um, when I when that happens mm-hmm. to me. I think about something that happened to us a long time ago. We went to see John Mayer in concert. This might have been like 2020 <laughs> or 2021. I think we might have 2020? been 2020. I'm, so, see- I'm sorry, 2000. I was 2000. Like, <laughs> couldn't see him in 2020. <laughs> 2000 or 2001. This was like when he was real yeah. small time, and he basically said that. In the concert one day, he was like, all of a sudden, I need a haircut today. But then I was thinking, you know, with a musician who's traveling around the country. Yeah. It's a whole thing. Like, how do you know you're going to go to a place and get a decent haircut? Do you go to Sport Clips? Do you go to (laughs) Fantastic Sam's? You just like roll the dice because you, you, you're like, you know, you're on the road. You don't know Mm -hmm. any of the places, but you, the stakes are high because you're a professional and you're standing in front of thousands of people. You got to look good. I mean, the stakes are high for you too. You know, you gotta, no, I can just put a hat on (laughs) (laughs) like you can see today. Seriously. I I feel like I'm living in this um, peak beanie, but it is so cold. (laughs) We're in Texas and it's so cold. It was 23 degrees here this morning. (laughs) Crazy. I came out here at like six 30 this morning and turned the heater in the office on mm-hmm. just to get it warmed up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, still really cold. Um, speaking of it being cold, sponsor for today's episode is the North Face. <laughs> if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see that Blakely's wearing this puffy jacket. It's not even a puffy jacket. And the reason it's a sponsor is, is I put it on because it's freezing in here. I was like a little early, like shivering. Yeah. And he said, you need to take that jacket off. It's too loud for the podcast. Well, she's not wearing headphones, <laughs> so she can't hear everything that's coming through her microphone. And every time she... Yeah, when she does Is that, that too loud, I, can, I can hear it. Everybody that's listening to us in their car or in their headphones. Oh, I will like, be very still, yeah, but I'm wearing the jacket. Keep your arms out like this the whole episode. Okay. <laughs> no scratching. All right. Uh, okay, so with the sponsor out of the way, let's let's let everybody in on this amazing announcement that we've got for them. I mentioned it on the Monday podcast, but yeah. for the month of January, we're offering anybody who wants to take advantage of it, assuming you start in January, make this thing happen in January, we're going to give you a completely free mm-hmm. week of training and coaching from us and coaching this is like not just like here's here's a few free workouts this is like you're gonna get you're gonna get invited to true coach you're gonna get a coach like you're gonna get the whole experience for free just if you if you've been on the fence i've been like i've been listening to digital barbell and i'm curious and i want to know what it's like to work with one of you guys well this is your opportunity for absolutely free and we're not even going to be like netflix and make you put in a credit card yeah the only thing you're going to have to do is you're going to sign a waiver yep you're going to you're going to see the pop up on the website or you can go to literally our coaching page and it says like free week of coaching right there if you just go to digitalbarbell.com sign up by putting yep. your email you'll get a waiver yep. sent to you that's really what we need you to do is just sign the waiver and then you'll we will send you an email with an invite to True Coach. You'll you'll get the True Coach app on your phone. You'll get set up in there. That's where you'll see your workouts, see the video demos. That's where you'll send us, us your results, and that's where we'll begin to chat with you. You're gonna get so, the full experience. Yeah, we haven't really promoted this other than mentioning it uh, in an email and in the pod on the podcast the other day. It's only been a few days, and several people are already taking advantage mm-hmm. of this. So I think it's gonna be something really yeah. popular. So if you've ever wondered and you've been like, I'm afraid to try, I don't know what yeah. it's going to be like. Am I going to be able to do this? All the barriers have been removed. Yeah. No come, come do it for craziness. Free. Just, yeah. And 
And, and you can just you go. go to digitalbarbell.com forward slash free week to mm -hmm. if you can't find the pop up or navigate through the menus or anything like that. And of course, we'll put a link to it in the show notes. Mm -hmm. And the, the reason is just that, like we said, like sometimes I think people are unsure of yeah. what it's like to work with an online coach because, you know, you know, you can go into a gym and look and peek in the window and be like, what's it like in there? But <laughs> with an online coaching situation, you're like, how do I even know what this is like? And this is the opportunity for you guys to understand what it's like. Yeah. You can't peek in our window. Can't peek in the window. <laughs> Please don't come peek in the windows. All uh, right. Yeah. And just so you know, like it's not like a zoom meeting where we're going to like get on a call with you and watch you work out. Like you get yeah. to do this on your own time yeah. and then we coach you after the fact and give you all the feedback yeah. that you need. So, so I guess the requirement is you have either gym equipment at home, a gym um, membership, a gym membership or a place that you work out, a cellular phone to look at the <laughs> app. <laughs> All right. A data plan so you can actually watch this. <laughs> yeah. uh, we haven't even said what this episode's yeah. about yet. We have a Q&A and and episode. We're gonna, last week was a really long uh, podcast episode. We're going to try to blast through these Q's and A's, I think. Maybe we need to work on keeping the intros shorter. <laughs> That's what we're following. No way. It's the best part. Short. It's the best part. All right. Here we go. We got some questions. Thank we you, got guys. Some, you got some <laughs> questions and we got some answers. <laughs> All right. This is a good one. This is probably timely. Um, maybe a lot of people are, are seeing this, but it's, this question is a lot of my friends started fasting for new years. Is this good to do? How does it work? Uh, yeah. It's that time of year. Everybody's thinking about mm -hmm. different diets. What are we going to do to lose weight? And with Netflix popping out new documentaries all the time, there's always something to talk about. Yes. Uh, when is the fasting documentary going to come out? That would be interesting. <laughs> all right. So the question was, is, is it a good thing to do and how does it work? How does it work? Yeah. All right. So let's just <clears throat> review like why any diet works. Every diet does the same thing. It just uses a different tool to get there. Um, you know, going keto eliminates carbohydrates. So therefore the calories from carbohydrates go away. Going carnivore does the same thing. Weight watchers gives you a point system that makes you account for everything you eat, makes you eat less calories. Fasting cuts down on the amount of time you have to eat during the day, which reduces the potential for how many calories you can eat. But all of these different kinds of diets do the same thing. They reduce the amount of calories you eat throughout the day. Therefore, your body burns its existing body fat for energy to make up the difference. So fasting in and of itself isn't like uh, doing anything special to create fat loss other than using this tool of time restriction to create the calorie deficit that causes fat loss. So with that out of the way, let's talk about, well, is it a good thing to do? I think um, it can be one of the easiest things to do because when people want to start a diet, they want very clear rules to follow that are uh, you know, they're not complicated and it's easy to know if you did it or not. And if you're giving yourself a time window that you can't eat, you either did it or you didn't. And there aren't a whole lot of other rules and confusion around protein, carbs, fat supplements, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So it's one of the easiest ways to lose weight, but is it a good thing to do? I think there's a lot more downside and potential risks than, um, make than th that outweigh any potential benefit from it being easy to do. So let's talk about what some of those might be. Okay. I've seen it be able to really feed into kind of this like restrict and binge mm. cycle. You know, what's going to happen when you go through a prolonged period of fasting, you know, eight, 10, 12 hours, you're going to get really, really hungry. And I don't know about you, but I don't always tend to lean towards the most nutritious choices with what I eat when I'm really, it's like really an emergency, hungry. like eat now. Yeah. Right. So it can kind of like, you know, build up all this anticipation of eating and lead to some poor nutritional mm -hmm. choices. And actually you, it could lead to so many or such bad nutritional choices that you could actually eat more calories than you normally would throughout an entire day. If you tend to eat way overeat during your quote feeding window. Mm -hmm. And if you have really high calorie, really highly palatable foods available, I mean, you could easily hit your daily calories if you binge on a p an entire pizza during your feeding window. So I've seen that be able to kind of feed into that building up anticipation and then way overeating less nutritious food. So that's something to be aware of. The other thing is it can be like kind of make you a social outcast. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say you, you like to go out to breakfast with your family, but that like impedes with when you're supposed to not be eating. It just yeah. creates this awkwardness, which ultimately leads to you feeling weird about it, which ultimately leads to tension in your life, which <laughs> ultimately leads to you quitting doing the thing. Yeah. So it might not be the most sustainable from a social, social aspect, which would be a kind of a red flag reason maybe not to do it in the first place, which brings me to the last 
point of why it might not be a great idea is that it's probably not going to be a sustainable thing for you to do to lo do long term for all those reasons that I already said. Um, and what's the downside of that? Well, you didn't really learn anything about healthy eating. You didn't form any healthy yeah. habits around nutrition just by blocking out a time <clears throat> when you didn't eat. So when you get tired of doing the fasting, what habits do you have to fall back on that you know, give you energy throughout the day that help you eat the right amount of food that taught you about what proper portions look like that help you learn strategies for dealing with stress mm -hmm. and hunger and all those things. Basically, you didn't learn anything that was a tool you could take with you later on once you got the results. So most people, when they, they lose fat through uh, intermittent fasting and they didn't build any of those things that I just said, the results just slowly or pretty quickly disappear once they go back to eating uh, throughout the day because yeah. they're now their calorie intake goes up to where it used to be or even higher above and the body sees that extra energy stores it as body fat and then the cycle repeats so all in all i would say you know it can be a useful tool but for most people i wouldn't recommend it especially if mm -hmm. you don't have the guidance of a coach to help you understand the healthy habits behind nutrition and help you wean off of it when the time comes to stop fasting mm -hmm. so one thing you can do if if like we talked about this when we were thinking about the answer for this question is if it's just like some people struggle with just snacking at like snacking, not because they're hungry, but just like, you know, yeah. I, I like to snack at nighttime or whatever, whatever it is. Ritualistic yeah. snacking kind of. So you can actually put some barriers around that yeah. kind of thing. Like for example, like don't eat after 8 30 PM. Mm -hmm. if, if like normally like after eight, you know, you just kind of wander into the kitchen and get something, but you're not really hungry. Yeah. Like that's not, you're not really fasting, but you're kind of putting a window of like, okay, I don't eat after 8.30 mm -hmm. PM. Yeah. And it's not for any reason other than like, that's yeah, when you so might grab. You know. Nobody's like grabbing the ice cream out of the freezer first thing in the morning. Yeah. So, you know, I would say like yeah, using the principle of time restricted right. eating, which intermittent fasting really is to cut out nighttime snacking could be beneficial, mm -hmm. but it, that's really just like eliminating what would be considered a bad habit. Right. Also, like <laughs> I think about this with our clients that are parents a lot, cause I know that uh, it's really tempting to grab your kids leftovers and finish off mm -hmm. plate and feel like you're wasting food, but fasting from doing those kinds of things can be really <laughs> beneficial, uh, for your progress with weight loss. And if you think about it from that perspective, instead of just like, I have to eat this so it won't be wasted. Just think, no, I'm fasting from eating this food that isn't really part of my diet. Yeah. It can be a useful tool. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. Uh, next one. I struggle with sleep the most. <laughs> Any tips to get <laughs> better most. sleep? Um, Let's preface this. Yeah. Like that we're not biohackers. Like we're regular people that we, we prioritize our sleep, but we don't like have a pro. Yeah. We don't have a 30 step protocol that we follow for sleep, but mm -hmm. what we do works for us and we think it can work for you too. Yeah. And it's not like, yeah, like he said, it's not, we don't do any like turn on blue lights or any, any kind of weird stuff <laughs> to get better sleep. But I think some of the things that we've done helps us get better sleep is I, I, one thing I've noticed in my life is like showering at night makes me just feel like I sleep better. Like I feel clean and I get into bed clean. And if there's a situation where for some reason I can't shower at night, I do feel like it affects my sleep. So yeah. that habit that's been going on for years and years and years for me has really helped me get better sleep. You converted me into a nighttime shower yeah. also. And, and now, now it's almost like you can't not do it. You know, like there's, a, you... there's still those nights where you're like, man, like I didn't really do anything like since the last time I showered, do I really need to? Yeah. Like it's going like, to, it's going to take five minutes to do or it. Or less. Every, yeah, like, every time I do it, I'm like, man, I'm so glad I showered before I went to bed. I feel yeah. so clean and uh, just more comfortable. Yeah. So like I'm yeah. glad you converted me is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and you know what, when we watch these YouTubers that are like into camping and stuff and they're like living in their van and like, I'm like I'm, how do they even sleep? It's, I know <laughs> it's been days since you've showered. Aren't your like thighs sticking together <laughs> and like every time your arm touches your chest, you're like, Oh, so sticky. Yeah, but it really is a thing that has helped us sleep better. Yeah. Second thing is cold cold bedrooms yeah. help us sleep better. Um, the third thing is we don't read our phones in the bedroom. So we don't bring our phones in and that does just helps you not get like emails trigger, like trigger emails, trigger text messages, mm -hmm. trigger Instagram posts, trigger whatever messages that are coming in at you and like making your brain start to tick at night. That's like one thing that would just, you know, helps yeah. prevent that. 
And, and we don't watch, if we do watch something like to, to like, you know, in bed or anything like that, we don't like watch any kind of like adrenaline pumping, like <laughs> kind of thing. Like, well, we don't like, we watch, we say, you know, we watch that kind of stuff on the couch. Like we yeah. won't bring that stuff to watch in bed. So if we do want to watch something, it's like a calming, like we watch like a lot of trailer tours and <laughs> camping videos and things like that. And eventually we're like, Oh yeah. Well, just don't, get, but, uh, don't like watch you know, like a movie with a giant fight scene or a, a mystery that's like, or, a, or emotional a stuff movie. too. Like yeah. something that's like going to trigger your emotion, like either exciting or sad or, you know, any thought provoking stuff. Yeah. But it's not, you know, like, th I mean, those are simple little things, but I think like, I think like the biggest thing is people say that they're like, get their mind racing at night. Yeah. And I think like kind of turning off the time whenever you are checking your notifications Yeah. because no, you don't, you don't have any control over what people are sending you in. So that's emails, that's text messages, whatever it is. And so you just like cutting off the time that you're going to like, look at that kind of stuff yeah. can just help you like start to go with your own thoughts and wind yeah. down. I have my phone set to go into do not disturb mode at nine o'clock. So there's nothing like pops up on yeah. my screen that even tempts me to click on it and look mm -hmm. at it. Cause I could, you know, get like a triggering message from a friend or a family member. And like, even if I know I'm not going to reply to it right then, I might wake You're up thinking. at three o'clock in the yeah. morning and start formulating my hypothetical response in my mind. And that might keep me awake for 30 minutes or an yeah. hour. So it's better just not even go there. And like you, everybody already knows this, but just don't get caught in the loop of the short form scrolling content mm -hmm. laying in bed. Like before you know it, 30 minutes conservatively might go by an hour maybe. And that's just like, that's, it's a huge impact on your sleep when you add that up over the course of the week. And not only that, but it's an emotional thing. Like you're reacting somehow to these things that you're seeing, you know, whether they're making you feel happy or sad or yeah. whatever. And that does not tend to help you go to sleep. Yeah. So I mean, those are really simple things <laughs> yeah. to follow without yeah. like, you know, having to turn your life upside down, mm -hmm. but it really does help. All right. As a beginner, where should I even start to work out? Working out to lose weight and build muscle. Mm. This is a great question. Again, timely for the for the uh, first part of the year. Can I say so, something before we start on sure. this one? Because actually, when we talked about formulating our response for this one, I didn't really read the entire question correctly because they talked about starting to work out and lose weight while building muscle. Right. Let's just reemphasize that, like while exercise <clears throat> and training is an important part of your weight loss journey, because you're going to be way more consistent with your uh, training and your, in the things you're trying to do with your gym in the gym with your mm -hmm. fitness, if you are, well, let me, let me reverse that. I messed it up. What you do in the gym is going to help you build muscle and get stronger. But what you do with your nutrition is the part that's going to help you lose mm -hmm. the weight. You're going to be, you're going to have better success with weight loss if you're doing this stuff in the gym, but to ultimately your weight loss comes down to your nutrition. And this is the reason that so many people struggle is because they think I'm, I want to lose weight. Like mm -hmm. let's get started working out. Okay. That's a big part of it. But what you put in your mouth is really the dial that needs to be turned for weight loss. And they just go hand in hand with how you feel like yes. so much. Like, they, they, they're yeah. synergistic as the kids say, <laughs> but so anyway, all right, let's talk yeah. about what we talked about. So this about. is, um, so this is a big, it can be a beginner. Like I've never really been you know, not gone to the gym and done that, you know, in my life, or it can be someone who's like, I've had a big hiatus. Like yeah. I've been like, you know, I used to go to the gym or I used to be an athlete or whatever. And I've, it's been, it's been a while it's been a minute. and I'm ready to get back. All right. So I would suggest three full body days. Um, and this is just about a 30 minute or so workout. Yep. Um, so the first thing, like with your focus on like, a few things in, in this order. So your first goal is consistency. <laughs> yeah. So I want you to hit that workout three times a week. I want you to have a time, a place and a day of the week that you work out. Mm -hmm. And I don't want your first goal with this just to be do to do this consistently yeah. because that's the first thing we need because like it's been a while or I've never really done this before. Let's get some momentum. That's going. it. That's all you that's all you care about right now. It's <laughs> good. And then other these the other things will fall into place. The second thing you're going to care about is just getting good at the movements. So you're going to have a pretty simple program. You're going to be doing a lot of the same things over and over again within like the say like this first month. Yeah. But that we want you to be consistent and then we want you to be good at what you're doing. Like I want to be able to like see you do a really good press. I want to see you do a really good squat. I see you do a really good row like with, you know, consistency. That jacket is loud. Have we talked about that yet? <laughs> 
<laughs> and then the third thing you're going to focus on is getting stronger by using a linear progression. So number one, you're consistent. Number two, you're good at the movements. And now that you're good at the movements, you're going to build weight using a linear progression. So say we start with five pounds in each hand on our strict presses with our dumbbells. Once we get to like 12 to 15 reps for all three sets, we're going to bump those up to tens in each hand. Boom. And we're going to 12s. Same thing with your other movements. The simple process of getting stronger. Yep. That, and that's pretty much it. And so in addition to that, I think like um, just consistency with your activity throughout all seven days of the week. So just like monitoring your steps. Mm -hmm. And I think this is just a great way to do this. Monitor your steps, see where you are, and then add a little bit more, add a little bit more, add a little bit more. But all this is done with consistency. And like, I think a lot of people forget that, you know, because part of what we, what we didn't say in here was like, you know, start adding in miles of running and like doing cardio and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You're going to get some cardiovascular benefit out of doing this strength training. Mm -hmm. And that's a good way to get a base of that before you start adding in more intense conditioning. It's like, it can be intimidating to like, feel like you have to do all this cardio and you're getting out of breath and your joints start hurting and all that kind of stuff. That's why we start with yeah. getting, you know, building strength with somebody who's a total beginner. Yeah. And like I said, this is like a three full body days with just with some dumbbells, nothing difficult at all. Super important whether you hire us or not to get some eyeballs on your form during mm -hmm. this time too, especially if you're new and you're not just coming back from being off. Cause you want to build strength knowing that you're using the correct technique, not only to get stronger, like, you know, in the right way, but to avoid getting hurt, you know, mm -hmm. you don't want to like get really good at doing bad movement patterns, yeah. but as it gets heavier, <laughs> you finally end up getting hurt. So getting some eyeballs on your mm -hmm. form. Hey, you could do the free a week, idea. get a sample yeah, program, go. get some eyeballs on your form. I love it. All right. Next one. I've hit a plateau in my deadlift. Are there any accessory exercises or techniques I can use to break through? You bet your bippy there is. <laughs> and I think we've all been there too. Yeah. Um, first thing you do is have somebody check your form. Maybe there's an issue with the, the technique that you're using. Mm -hmm. Maybe your shoulders are too far above the bar and you need to get your shoulders out in front of the bar. Maybe your hips are too low in your setup. The point is like form matters with the deadlift yeah. and you know, just like with building strength with good form, you know, it can prevent you from getting stronger mm -hmm. too. Um, one of my favorite ways is just to add more deadlift volume in, you know, volume is one of the best mm -hmm. drivers of hypertrophy and strength. And if you're, you, if you're stuck, that means you've adapted to what you've done before. We got to do a little bit more and just adding in more, you know, adding in one extra set of deadlifts uh, at a different intensity or at the same intensity or different rep range is a great way to, to yeah, they didn't plateau. say like what they're doing. So let's just right. say they're doing a linear progression. They're doing three by five and maybe they're stuck at a certain weight and they can't progress over that. So he's saying like, basically like we can't add any weight to the bar, but we're, we can add a set mm -hmm. and that can be a set of like three to five reps just to get more, you know, normally you've been doing 15 reps in a set. Let's get 18 to 20 reps under your belt yeah. with that weight. And like, I think, I think that will give you some progress. Or if right you're there. like hardcore starting strength and you're only doing one set of five on your deadlifts every week. That's true. Yeah. We need to bring, mm -hmm. we need to bring up the uh, volume. Yeah. <laughs> um, another one of my favorite ways is to just switch up the progression yeah. that you're using. If you've been just trying to add five pounds every week mm -hmm. and you're just kind of keeping the rep range and the intensity the same. Let's change things up a little bit. Let's go to more like a three week cycle where we're doing like a heavy week, a medium week and a light week. And then mm -hmm. repeating that cycle, adding weight to each move. That's a great way to, to make progress yep. and get break through a sticking point. Um, the strongest that my deadlift has ever been in my entire life was last year. And I think the reason that it was, is because I added, an alternate version of the deadlift mm -hmm. in a second time during the week. So I would do my conventional deadlift on one day. And then when I was recovered from that, I would personally, I would do stiff leg deadlifts. Mm -hmm. The good thing about those is you can load them up really heavy, almost, almost as heavy as your conventional deadlift. So basically the trick there is just adding in a variation of the deadlift later in the week. It's adding more volume, yeah, it's adding just, more volume. just yeah. like the, uh, the first tip was so, so a stiff leg deadlift or an RDL, right? Something. Yeah. An accessory. Yeah. If, and if you're using, uh, like if you're, I guess you wouldn't be stuck on your deadlift if you're using dumbbells, but, <laughs> but anybody who works out at home with dumbbells and you want to add more let uh, glute and hamstring work in, you're already mm -hmm. doing dumbbell deadlifts. You could do a variation like RDLs with yeah. your dumbbells too. And then like, this is probably more aimed at somebody who's lifting on the more on the competitive side, but you've probably seen videos or experience where you fail on a deadlift 
because you like get stuck at a certain part of the range of motion. Like maybe you never even get it off the ground. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's always kind of getting stuck at your shins. Maybe you're having trouble locking it out at the top. Basically there's somewhere in the range of motion where you're experiencing yeah. weakness and assuming that your form is on point, we can work on different variations of the deadlift that work specifically on that range. So maybe if you're getting stuck off the floor, we start throwing in some deficit deadlifts. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're getting stuck at lockout, maybe we, and introduce some band tension that makes it harder at the top of the rep or we work on rack pulls where the bar starts from an elevated position. Yeah, manipulate where you start your your training sets exactly. so yeah. that you can manip, you know, kind of figure out where you're stuck. And this probably wouldn't take the place of your uh, conventionals, yeah. but it would be extra volume added in with this kind of variation. Mm -hmm. So I think you're getting the point that uh, getting through any kind of plateau typically takes more volume than you're doing. Yeah. Now. And this can go like someone stuck on press or bench or anything. Like you can kind of right. add these techniques for any lift that you might be stuck on. And the last thing I think is to double check your recovery resources. Yeah. Like, how, like how much are you resting between sets is a huge one. And not only that, like how much are you sleeping and how much, you know, how much are you eating throughout the week too? Like, yeah, if you're, yeah. if you're like stuck at a four Oh five deadlift, and you're resting two minutes between sets, we don't need to fix anything except for have you rest more between sets to break through the plateau. Mm -hmm. So I would love to know how long this person is resting between sets because that's definitely the lowest hanging fruit mm -hmm. to pick to maybe break, break through this plateau. Yeah. And I think like <laughs> I have this conversation with clients a lot, um, especially if I'm training them, but I'm not doing their nutrition coaching and they start uh, kind of hitting plateaus in different areas of strength is the first thing I start digging into is like, how, how, much, how much are you eating? How's your sleep? Yeah. How's your life stress? Mm -hmm. uh, all these kinds of things. I think people think, oh, they always think like when I'm having a problem in the gym, the fix is to do something different in the gym. Mm -hmm. But remember, that's only like a very small part of your entire fitness journey, no yeah. matter if you're focused on strength or conditioning or whatever. 99% of your progress is what you do in between your, your gym sessions, yeah. all your recovery. So don't ignore that. It can help you mm -hmm. uh, reach new levels of fitness or break through a plateau, either one. Yeah. All right. Next one. If I can only work out three times per week, how should I structure my workouts? You can get a taste of that by doing the free week with digital barbell. <laughs> um, so I think with this question, I would say like, number one, do you, are you consistently hitting all three days? Mm -hmm. So, cause the answer would vary. So if you are a three day a week worker outer and you don't consistently hit three days you, and you like, what we don't want to fall into is only hitting like certain body parts. So yeah. if you like, if you, if like you have a program that you get and it's, you know, a templated program and you're like, okay, I, I, it's three days a week, but I'm usually only hitting one to two. You might only be doing like, yeah. you know, only upper body work or something like that. And like, if, if every Monday is the same, and that's the only day you can get to the gym. Like I'm that's what we want to kind of, that's why my answer would vary. So like if, if you, if you're consistent, I'll tell you my answer. If you're not consistent, <laughs> I will say, go back to what we said for like the beginner and go to like a full, bo full body days Yeah. because we want to make sure you're getting all the work in per week. Um, if you're consistent, I would recommend this. And this is what I would generally prescribe for our clients too. Um, so day one, you do some like pressing with some accessories like rowing, a secondary press. Like, so if, if people are doing a barbell press, I might have them do like a dumbbell row and then do an Arnold press with dumbbells. That's what I mean by a secondary press. And then some flies, like reverse flies or something for your upper back and rear shoulder. And then probably a finisher with like push ups and abs in there. And, and, um, kind of be creative on that. Yeah. Um, day two, I'll have the you squat and do accessories like RDLs or lunges probably like pull-ups and chin-ups on this day. And then this would probably be your conditioning day where you would also see more legs, like mm -hmm. some squats or box jumps or lunges or something like yeah, that. Some accessory legs in the conditioning. Yeah. And then day three would be like your pulling from the floor. So your bench pressing and your horizontal pressing, your bench pressing. So if you're only three days a week, like did if you're four, you, if you you're four days, deadlift, you said pulling from the floor, bench pressing, you meant uh, pulling from the floor with your deadlift and, gotcha. and your horizontal pushing yeah. your dead, the, your bench press. So if you're four days a week, generally we'll split like the four main lifts, the mm -hmm. press, the squat, the bench and the deadlift, like as your first movement. But if you're three days a week, I'll squeeze uh -huh. usually the deadlift and the bench press together. And then your accessories will be like biceps and triceps work. And then like probably some glutes in your finisher. So you could see like if you were skipping that third day, 
every single you week would, when life got busy, you'd be missing you'd be a huge missing, part yeah. of your body. Yeah. And, and then the other piece is like, if you're not consistently getting three days in a week and you're spreading that more like 10 days, you're just, everything is spread out a little yeah. bit more and There's you're not, not enough frequency there to actually yeah. cause growth. So this is if you're consistent for three days, if you're not consistent with three days then more like full body days every day. And it's not about your intent to be consistent. It's about what's actually happening. Let's yeah. just be honest with ourselves and look at how often we're hitting this stuff. Um, what if you are, so what would you recommend if somebody comes to terms with the fact that they're not actually hitting three days per week and they're only going to work out two days per week? What would be the, not, not a, like a program for them, but just the general advice if you're only going to do two days per week. Um, you either have to make your workouts a little bit longer and like squat and press on the same day and then get all the accessories in, um, with your, you know, some conditioning work and everything and then yeah. bench and deadlift on the same day, you know, with all the accessories and, you know, get your ab finishers. So it's just not a, not a ton of time to do yeah. that or do two full body days. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Most, I would say that's probably the first answer for most people if they're if they're at a point in their life where they're only going to be able to work out twice per week, let's just hit two really solid full body days mm -hmm. until we can be more consistent with three yeah. days. All right. All right. Last one. Last one. All right. Collagen protein. What is the deal? I feel like if What's you can the count deal? the times that we've talked about collagen protein, I would well, like to know. Somebody might be new to the podcast. No, no I'm they, just saying that like, it's I feel like still. it's come up a lot. Uh, yeah. We've just, there's, there's a jar in our house because someone visiting for Christmas <laughs> left some collagen protein. I was like, what are you doing with this? Anyway, what's the deal with it? And is it worth taking is the question. Yeah. I think, you know, as with most supplements, they're not necessary, <laughs> but let's talk about what collagen protein okay. is specifically why people are taking it and what might be a better alternative. I left my notes over on my desk. So I'm just going to wing this, but, um, collagen protein seems to be aimed at targeting women to buy based on like the mm -hmm. packaging and stuff like that. I work with a lot of women who are putting collagen protein in their coffee kind of as a creamer. It's a good way to sneak in about 10 grams of protein. I think that's about what one scoop has and it is protein. So let's just get that out of the way. Collagen protein does count towards how much protein you're trying to eat per day, mm -hmm. but just like protein in any kind of snack or supplement, we got to zoom out and look at the bigger picture and figure out, is it worth it? Is it really doing anything? So since this kind of protein seems to be targeted at women, they're kind of marketing it as something that can help with looking younger with, you know, improving your skin, improving with elasticity, getting rid of wrinkles, <laughs> like and then there's the side where like improves, you know, supports that yeah. everything says supports, like this supports, supports joint health, supports right. hair. So collagen protein. And the reason that we, that they do it that way is because, well, it makes sense, right? You know, we know that our skin and our hair and our nails and our joints are made up of collagen. They have a lot of collagen in them. Well, let's supplement with collagen, get mm -hmm. more of that. Therefore we'll see improvement in those things. Unfortunately, it doesn't really work that way in the body. You know, you don't get to choose, uh, like where a nutrient you eat is going to be used mm. in your body. What actually happens is when you eat a protein source, your body breaks it down into the constituent amino acids that were in, that were in the source of protein. And then it uses that in your body for whatever process it needs it for at that time. So anything that you eat with protein in it could be used to produce hormones. It could be used to build new tissue, to repair tissue. You don't mm -hmm. get to decide like, this is going to go to my skin. This is going to go to my hair. Your body doesn't work like that. And unfortunately collagen as a protein source, it lacks. If you've, you've ever heard of, I know you have, but I'm saying to the listener, you ever heard of a complete protein, a complete protein means that it contains all nine of the essential amino acids. That's, that's the group of amino acids that are responsible for, uh, helping you get stronger for improving your body composition, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And collagen protein falls short of being a complete protein because it lacks at least two that I remember of the essential amino acids. So while it does contribute to your total daily protein, it's a poor source of protein because it's not a complete protein. Complete proteins are things like meat, dairy, eggs, soy, rice, pea, those kinds of things. So it's a poor source of protein that will not help you, um, directly, you know, do the things that we're trying to do, improve mm -hmm. body composition, build muscle, build strength, all that kind of stuff. So the two main points are it doesn't necessarily get used to make your skin joints, hair, all that kind of stuff better. And it's a poor source of protein for building muscle 
in strength. Also, if you look at the cost compared to like a complete protein of whey protein or veggie protein made up of soy, rice, and pea, it's super, super expensive because you're buying these tiny little bottles yeah. versus buying a whole container mm -hmm. of whey protein. Um, so adding the 10 grams to your coffee is not going to move the needle for anything that you really care about. The, you could get just as good of benefits uh, just from eating a high protein diet or from supplementing with a whey protein. Plus you get all the benefits that we really want protein for in the first place. So if you're getting enough protein in your diet, like in supplementing with this, say you just wanted it for the, if you're the just skin, hair, yeah. all that kind of stuff. And it's, you're saying that like, it's like watering the grass while it's raining. You're getting an, you're getting enough. You're getting your, enough anyway. Your so diet. it's, you're not guaranteed you're that a higher that's quality gonna, version. Yeah. Of it do do what it says it says it's going to do on the bottle it's also kind of gross to know that collagen protein is most often made from cow skin or cow achilles <laughs> if you think about it think cow about that next achilles. time you're pouring it into mm. your uh wow. into your coffee <laughs> so anyway it's a lot of slick marketing uh, it's an unnecessary supplement i would rather you just have a protein containing meal and uh, get all the benefits without wasting money on supplements all right. Does that make sense? Okay. And we have a longer form blog about yeah. collagen protein, which I'll try to remember to link to in the show notes. <laughs> All right. Anything else you want to wrap up with? <laughs> Why think, are you laughing? I don't know. <laughs> Why don't you make, like, make your jacket make some noise for one Let's last. go. <laughs> All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot us a message on Instagram. We'll work them into a future episode. Mm -hmm. And again, we'll put the link to take advantage of the free week of uh, training and coaching with us in January 2024 in the show notes for this episode. All right. All right. Have a good day.